sometime around four months ago, DICE decided that the PKP wasn't good enough, and they buffed it. And suddenly, Battlefield 2042 had a seriously weird LMG that married the typical positive traits of an LMG with an SMG and an assault rifle, resulting in a slightly overpowered beast. I say slightly, because there are other weapons in Battlefield 2042 that are really good as well. Anyhow, in the latest patch, the PKP is nerfed, and we'll get back to that later. As usual, you can jump straight to the parts you find interesting using the timeline below. And if you like this video, make sure to throw in a thumbs up and subscribe to get more content like this. Much like many other weapons and equipment in Battlefield 2042, the PKP BP is meant to be a slightly updated version of an existing gun. The PKP Pechenegg is actually yet another weapon originally designed by Kalashnikov. The PKP Pechenegg is named for the Pechenegg people, a warlike tribe that once lived in the steppes that later became the southern Russia and Ukraine. In real life, the PKP is a rather new LMG, designed to be used in infantry squads and by Spetsnaz. About 80% of the parts are shared with the PKM, its predecessor, but there are notable differences in the construction around the barrel and muscle, allowing a more efficient cooling, actually similar to the old Lewis gun. This means that the gun can sustain a very high rate of fire for a long period of time. It's said to be able to fire around 10,000 bullets per hour without grading in performance. In real life, the fire rate is about 600 to 800 rounds per minute, and the manufacturer claims that it can fire 600 rounds per minute in a continued sustained fire. It's also said to have improved accuracy compared to its predecessor, much down to the changed design of the folding bipod, which is placed near the muscle. However, this is of course a trade-off as it limits the arc of fire available without moving the position of either the bipod or the shooter. Another trade-off is that it's uncomfortable and hard to fire the PKP from the shoulder or the hip as there is no handguard and the bipod is too far forward, unless you have huge monkey arms of course. It can be used Rambo style with the help of the sling swivels or by supporting the ammo box with the off -hand. With all this in mind, the original implementation in Battlefield 2042 was probably the most realistic. A classic LMG that wasn't very useful unless being static and using the bipod. However, as mentioned before, about 4 months ago, DICE decided it was time for the LMG to get some revenge. Essentially transforming them into beasts closer to the behavior common in assault rifles or even SMGs. Suddenly, the recoil spread was very manageable even when standing, and actually fairly well when using hip fire. When actually using the bipod, the weapon almost turned into a laser. With max size of 200 rounds, players rarely had to reload, actually making me forget from time to time. With patch 4 though, DICE decided it was time to nerf it a bit, and I quote, increased PKP BP base recoil. So how much of a difference are we talking about? And what does that even mean? I started to play patch 4 without reading the patch notes, because I was curious of how much difference I could actually see, and, well, I'm kind of lazy. But uh, you aren't here to listen to my reading habits though, but the point is that this change was very apparent. I really had to work with it to get kills. And running in like you do with an AK M5 MP9 or a K30, well, that was really rough. First, I didn't know whether or not to blame the game, but I soon realized that the weapon is simply harder to control. Nerf. Quite a lot, actually, I think. I don't really mind that the, that an LMG gets more recoil, and by recoil, I think DICE refers to both vertical and horizontal recoil, or uh, recoil and spread, if you wish. I explained it in an old video about weapon control and Battlefield 5, which you can see in the top right corner now. Back to the PKP. As I said, I don't mind DICE adding recoil and spread to an LMG when you run around with it. Typically, LMGs are a bit too heavy to control very efficiently when running around. However, as I normally use the bipod to get an extended range, it soon became very apparent that the increased recoil and spread affects the result when using the bipod as well. Although I can agree that it was a bit too accurate before, I think making it this messy when using a bipod essentially makes it useless. But 
what's the point of being static and vulnerable when the game is little to none? However, there is a silver lining. The new attachments actually make it possible to counter most of the nerf, but we'll get back to that later. First of all, let's clear the thing that we unfortunately can't change at all. The underbarrel can't be changed for the PKP. This restricts the customization to only three aspects, which is a bit sad. On the other side, since it's actually got a handle, it motivates at least partly its effectiveness while running, which is different from the current real PKP pressure neck. Next up is the muscle, and this is pretty much the only knob we can turn to compensate for the nerf as of patch 4. Before the patch, I ran the champion muscle break as default, since it increased the vertical recoil control at the expense of horizontal recoil control. While it's easy to handle vertical recoil control, it can also be a bit tiresome. Since I didn't find the horizontal recoil too bad, I was happy to get some more vertical control, allowing me to be a bit more relaxed. This was very much down to personal preference, says I, but of course I know that most pro players went for the horizontal. But let's get back to patch 4. As of patch 4, the attachments are revamped. This actually gives us the opportunity to counter the nerf a bit, which works quite alright. It is not as good as it was before, but it's still a very powerful weapon, and you can still run around basically as you do with an assault rifle. As the default, I use the tactical compensator, which increases weapon accuracy at the expense of recoil control. This is such a weird description, and for a while I was quite puzzled. I think the increased weapon accuracy basically decreases the initial recoil, and the loss of recoil control refers to the more sustained recoil. Do you follow? So what we get is a weapon that is fairly accurate, especially at the beginning, but then you have to put some effort into the control, especially the vertical recoil. With most assault rifles, SMGs and LMGs, you probably want to go with the tactical compensator as of patch 4. My alternatives for muscles are mostly for experimental use. I I don't really think there is any reasonable alternative for, for any situation. Moving on to the ammunition types. I use standard issue which means a mag size of 200, uh, even if the game says 300 in the collection. Oh my god dice, get your sh** together. Where were we? Ah oh, yeah. Um, the standard issue mag. Yes, 200 rounds in each mag and a total of 400 rounds. To get the full benefit, make sure to get that compulsory reload reflex out of your system. And really use up all the bullets before reloading. As an option, I have the extended high power mag, which according to the description has slightly improved effective range, but decreased recoil control at rate of fire. I find it not worth it, and I think the mag size is a little bit smaller as well, so that's mainly why I prefer the standard issue. Finally, I have armor piercing rounds, which does less damage to infantry, but some damage to vehicles, and supposedly it can penetrate light materials as well, uh, whatever that may be. I tried it a bit to troll some vehicles, but it does too little damage, and the mag size is too small. Would be a fun idea to hunt vehicles with PQP though. When it comes to the sights, I started to use the Ghost Hybrid way back, and I still find it the best. Normally, I use the small scope with very little zoom, and if there is a target a bit further away, I normally switch to more zoomed in sight in combination with the bipod. As mentioned before in this video, I consider the spread or horizontal recoil to be a bit over the top when actually using the bipod. And remember, you can't use the bipod by attaching it to things. You need to go pro. So it's time for the final words. What is the verdict? How good is the PKP in Battlefield 2042 today? That means as of patch 4. Well, to be honest, it feels and behaves more like an LMG again, and it makes me not like it. It doesn't mean that it is bad, but it's certainly not as good as before, and above all, I don't like LMGs. So, I no longer like it. Luckily for me, I managed to get it here one just after the patch, and I don't like playing the weapons that I've already reached tier 1, so I don't have to play it anymore. No zombies were harmed making this video, and on that rather normal comment, it's time to say farewell for now. Cheers!